Shaka Bra, Shaka Bra. We're here back live on Morningwood Radio. If I can get my camera ready to go, Morningwood <laughs> Radio with the world traveler, with the new world record holder, Mr. Yeah. Roberto, aka the Hoot, aka the fastest man in high rocks ever right now, with a new world record time of 54 09. Oh, seven, dude. Don't short oh, seven. Me seven oh, seven. Seconds. Four, oh, seven. Dude, <laughs> dude your, your voice has really gotten crisp, dude. Yeah. It's gotten crisp. This is good. What, are you, boys been, what are you boys been up to? Let me get an update on, on Big Daddy Parks. Where have you been, dude? Uh, at the house, uh, working and uh, prepping for Galveston 70.3, man. It's uh, April 2nd. April 2nd. Yeah. Dude, that means after Galveston, you can come to training camp. Mm. Why don't you let me book you a ticket out here and we can finally film all those things you were talking about? Let's do it. I'm in. All right. That's cool. That's cool. Now we're all in agreement. Okay. Tell us about uh, Galveston. So 70.3, we're looking at a 1.2 swim. We're looking at a 56 bike. And then we're looking at a, a 10K run. 13.1 uh, mile. Half marathon. 13.1 mile. Let's get some data on this. What's your swim pace going to be? Uh, well, you know what? I was on pace in my training, uh, to go hopefully a 128, 129 per hundred. And then, uh, I jacked up my, uh, my shoulder. Uh, it's, oh man, I'm drawing a blank. It, it's the tendon that's attached to your bicep and it was causing me a very limited range of motion. So I ended up having to take a bunch of time off from the swim. And then, uh, luckily my wife has been rehabbing it so i'm all cupped out and scraped out right now so i got all the bruises so if i can just hold anything in like the low 130s per hundred i'll be happy with it uh the bike um we'll see um, i'm hoping to hold 23 24 miles an hour throughout the bike and then the run by the time i get to there i'm just gonna hold on <laughs> How, uh, what would you say like your thing is like right now? I mean, are you feeling, cause I remember you dumped on the bike last time. No offense. We're just telling oh, your dude. story. So you're, oh, wait, hold on. Yeah. 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 So you dumped, you dumped on the bike that last time. Yeah. Are you feeling, um, are you feeling like you're, you're comfortable on the bike again? Cause you were doing, when I was calling you, you were doing a lot of workouts on the train. Are you feeling good? Yeah. 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 Feeling good. Uh, you know, it's not my first bike crash, so I don't go timid into uh the bike course at all it's probably why i went down again uh when i used to race crits on the bike man dude i cannot tell you how many times that scar on my hip from waco with this right here it has been damaged that that skin is completely discolored for life at this point because i've mm. have road rash in that same spot probably five or six times <laughs> dude i uh when i was in dubai this is not similar but when i was in dubai we were doing sand dunes yeah. and so there, was, there was three shitty ones and there was three good ones we were in a pack of six or yeah. two and three so the three good ones like i was on the good one for a while and then i said halfway through i'll trade it out with somebody else so i took the shitty one and the guy who was riding the shitty one was a smaller guy oh. and these things were not that well tuned up and everything i went over a dune and you're kind of hitting the suspension and flowing in and out I yeah. came down and hit the brakes. I folded the bars forward so they just slid. So imagine like your handlebars weren't tight and they just rotated. Yeah, been so there. I went and I bent my wrist back fully, dude. And I'm just like, even I know this is not scar tissue, but like I, my wrists are so weak. I can barely hold a pen right now. It hurts so bad doing high rock shit leading up to champs. Oh, I can't imagine. Yeah, man. It, it's amazing how many little things are in there. I've done that before. Like I jacked up my thumb here uh, a few years ago, mountain biking. It just went the wrong way and it still has never been back to where it used to be. Damn, dude. Well, what do you feel about your running fitness right now? Uh, I, I've definitely made improvements. Um, I'm nowhere near where I used to be in my run, but I'm thinking by 2024, I should be back down to close to my original run pace stellar yeah Love so right so right now i think my threshold for a half marathon is like a 715 730 mile uh it used to be a 555 six minute mile mm. negative for a full marathon for a full half marathon after you've done the bike and the the swim yeah, so I'm hoping to hold somewhere. I'm gonna I'm gonna start out at an eight minute pace, 
and then see where I feel and just gradually, like, you know, break it down into four parts and then just slowly see if I can get faster and faster and faster. If I were you, dude, negative split runs. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Start off pretty fast. I'm going to break it down into four. I'm going to try to make it in four parts, almost like a negative split or like a fart, like almost, but get faster as I go. Fuck yeah, dude. Fuck yeah. So we'll uh, see. Ryan, tell us about your fitness, dude. You've been sending me all these naked pictures and stuff. Like, uh, what? I, usually, I didn't get I, any of those. I usually get them from chicks, but Ryan has been yes. sending me all these progress pictures. Like, boom, boom. Yeah, I got one, but I didn't get a full nudie. Yeah, dude. I got to see well, everything. I normally spread cover it up with the emojis. We, we can't go yeah, full no. nude. No, you I, saw, I, I saw a spread chic. Um, nice. You've been working with Regan. I've got a call with yes. her in an hour. Uh, how are you feeling? Are you lean and mean? Yeah, lean and mean, ready to take it on. Like, I've lost over 10 pounds. I you had a little flux because of a birthday celebration, eating pizza and whatnot and ice cream. Is, but, wait, is your um, birthday today? That was yesterday. yesterday. It was yesterday. Oh, fuck, dude. I'm so sorry. I had literally set everything up in my head. I dude, am so right. sorry. I'm a day off. Happy birthday. I figure you were, like, an, on a 24-hour just grind on getting back and, and doing, like, six <laughs> different planes. So. Fuck, I fucked that up so badly. I literally asked him so many days ahead of time, like, what's your birthday? He told me, like, six times. Well, you're probably still on yesterday's time mentally. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not to diminish your story, I just want to abbreviate this before I forget. I started because I missed you. You were all part of this. I missed my first flight because the uh -huh. Barcelona airports are a bunch of jerks. So then Pretty I got sure the next is. flight. They canceled the next flight. Got stuck in Barcelona two more days. Then I was so nervous. I left at four in the morning. Got to the airport like, and got there at four thirty for a seven thirty flight. Checked in. So seven thirty. I mean, I didn't get home until 6.45 last night, PST time. So I was traveling over 24 hours yesterday. Wow. Um, yeah. I was eating random pills. Anybody who gave me a pill, I was like, does this make me go to sleep? They're like, who knows, man? Have fun with it. And I was like, <laughs> and I was like <laughs> taking vitamins <laughs> off the floor. Well, wow, this looks good. <laughs> Is that a bus token? No. <laughs> like, I'll take anything. What's I just want to sleep. Um, well, shoot, dude. I'm sorry. Happy birthday. How was it? Thank you. It was great. I uh, I ate some portillos for lunch, had some pizza and ice cream for dinner. It was an amazing day. Nice, dude. But speaking speaking on uh, what you were saying, talking with uh, Reagan on a business call later, yes, on 90% of, of the other days, um, you know, that 80-20 uh, good versus bad eating, um, I've lost over 10 pounds, 10 or 11 pounds since the start of January working with her. Um, real good things, feeling, feeling a lot less uh, – big and ready lean and mean ready to take on maybe some high rocks and a half marathon coming up what are you yeah. doing a half marathon uh doing the indianapolis mini marathon it's may 6 damn daddy yeah that's now i can't sick. see with these because you know they're they're what uv protected so the screen goes dark but look at how dope these are Ooh, Dude. some like people those. make good choices you make great choices that yeah is that's a those are solid dude. yeah so do you I'm have any here. clue where you're going with those things? Yeah. What, what? Can you see anything or is it more for well, fashion? No, no, no. Like you can see that the thing is like it darkens your, your computer screen just because they're like UV. They're supposed to block out sun rays. But uh, if it if you're outside, yeah, it's super dark. It's nice. You can see it's just it just doesn't do well with like looking at a computer screen. I often will go to bars wearing sunglasses just because I want to have fun. Like, who gives a shit? And there's always some dick who bouncers comes. Bouncers don't like that, though. What's that? Because they can't see the bouncers don't like that, though, because they can't see your eyes. And you're like, like is I'm, this guy messed up? We got to see your eyes. Is this guy a demon? Yeah. Um, yeah. So basically, Ryan's an old fart now, Ryan Theory. Is that your dad? Just dropping uh, shit bombs on you? Yes, him? he is. Well, see, okay. So we got three groups connected. One is the private. Uh, house training group so it just shows up as facebook user then we got your professional page then we got the youtube page so these facebook users are from our house training group but i'm like 99 percent sure it's probably dad hey dad your dad always sends me really nice messages by the way i always i'm really grateful tom but it, like comes from like an email so at first i'm like damn i'm getting spammed and then i like read it and I'm like ah oh, tom yeah. tom's a shit so yeah. Uh, what was I just going to say? So I'll go to bars wearing sunglasses just for fun. And there's always some asshole who's like, yo, cool sunglasses, man. You can't just be like the rest of us. And I was like, thanks, asshole. I'm blind in one eye. And they're always like, 
and they're thrown back on their heels they're like dude i'm so sorry i was like yeah you can buy me a beer now for being a dick like you think that's cool being blind like that's my go-to move <laughs> they it works every time get back on them 60 yeah. percent of the time every time every, every time. time every time so uh we're back dude we're we're doing it i'm actually feeling way better um oh it's aaron oh aaron what's up aaron, what up, Ron? Yeah, Aaron, you should have said it's not your dad, it's your daddy. It's your daddy. <laughs> yeah, I turned 36, but my VO2 max on my on my watch, which I always go by the Garmin, shout out Garmin, um, says I'm like a VO2 of a 20, 20 year old. So we're gonna go by that. Really? Hell yeah. Yeah, yeah I did a uh, a DEXA or whatever, and it said Ooh. my uh, my biological yeah. age with everything is I'm still in my 20s, even though I'm 38. There we go. My buddy Craig got me that as a as a birthday gift. We're going to Chicago for a DEXA scan. Oh, sick! Yeah, the, the body yeah, fat cool. scan. Yeah, dude, it's pretty. Yeah. It's pretty cool because it uh, you get to see how much muscle mass you have and your bone density, and it gives a crazy accurate uh, scale of this is how much you have muscle in your weight, your bone weight, your overall weight. It's it's really cool. And you always score a little bit higher on your body fat on a DEXA scan because it takes into account all of your uh, body fat. So it's pretty badass. I did a Last bod time. pod one is that, time. Is that where you want you get in there and they're like, yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah, 8.9% yeah, 8, 8. Cool. last time I did it. No big deal. Wow. Nice. Yeah, um, I did it uh, a couple of months ago. I had, I had 6.1% 6. body fat when I was 30. That's lean. Very Shot. lean. Let, Dude, let's, you're like a couple of weeks out from a show at that point. I should have. I didn't know how good I, I was at at that point. <laughs> I let's, really do a, let's do a fuck, Mary kill. Um, All right. I was just trying to think. This picture, what body fat do you guys think I'm at? Because I'm actually, well, I'll, I'll say. Like when you finished, uh, like your race, like currently? Yeah. There, mm. oh, dude, got to be eight nine, if not mm. like seven point five. I'd say like eight eight percent. I'd say eight to under ten. Yeah, definitely. I think you there. were leaner there, but you were also, I think, a little lighter at that race. Yeah. So this yeah. is the world record from Dallas. This is fifty five oh nine, and this was is... that the race I was at fifty four oh seven. No, twenty twenty one. No, no, no. This one, I am. Got to be nine, eight, nine to ten pounds heavier in this picture, and yeah, I set the world record bulkier. by over a minute. Yeah, I wasn't expecting that at all. I feel like a brick right now. Daddy's got to lose. Dude, I said fifty-one fifty <laughs> on the on my in, time in race in race predictions. Yeah, some people thought I was crazy, but I was like, I think he's totally capable of going under fifty-two. I so can honey, do it. You're you're heavier now, setting the world record, setting the new world record than you were a year ago, setting it in fifty five oh oh nine. Yeah, I wish wow. I could show you guys this. Let me pick this seconds. up. You guys talk amongst each that yourselves, works. and I'm going to try to figure something out for thirty seconds. I'm gonna try to so, show you the difference. No, I, I I honestly think that he's very capable of going fifty two minutes. 52 so yeah. when they did the when they did their uh after the world um world championships last year and then they did you know two months of editing and and high rocks released on espn what is high rocks so they interviewed i think they interviewed uh one of the founders and he yeah, um he was quoted as saying something like i believe people will go like under an hour very soon um and that was or maybe it was the the very first uh, world championships recap, and I think it was maybe Christian. He was like, you know, I think people are going to go under under one hour very soon. We might not see it for a couple of years, and like Hunter did it the very next year. So this is why. So this right here is a oh. graph of my fitness over the past year. So this is March. The oh, hang on, this, tap is, the this is March of last year going into world championships. I, I thought I was training a fair amount back then. Mm -hmm. And this over here is my Ironman prep. And this right here whoop, 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 is when I found out that my boating dreams were fucked. So I was like, I hate myself. And I was like, I'm going to train until I cry. And then I, so I literally just, 
I think I just have been doing so much cardio, like so, so, so much cardio that literally it, it, I, even though that I'm heavier, I just get less tired and there's did a diminishing you, uh, returns. Yeah. Did, did you focus, but that's what I was going to ask. Did you focus more on the cardio aspect since you had the strength base and you're I like, biking, you know what? Like, I don't need to go crazy on, on the, uh, the strength. Let's, let's focus on cardio. I bike for about 12 to 15 hours a week, every single week until my legs were in good enough shape to start running. And then I started running about 50 miles a week. Um, that's a lot. That's a good amount. Yeah. Um, the Iron Man was a great base, which Jay Fit said, like the Iron Man was a good base and it just was like, I built well, up. Let's not get this. too far into that. Cause I have questions on that. Okay, go. Wait, let me get, let me get my coffee. Hold on. <laughs> get it. Get your coffee. It's <laughs> early. Oh, it's fuck, early. That was a good one. Like the folks in California don't really get going till at least 11 or 12. 1030 is like when they're waking up. I, I was out there and I was like, you know, let, let's go to a shop and all coffee shops. It's like we don't open till at least 1045. And then where are, in California. Oh, yeah. There's California. only a few spots that open up. Early. Yeah. It, it's not an early town. No, you know, have you ever been to Greece or Spain? I haven't, but I, I, I mean, Hawaii is like, we're on island time. Okay. Yeah. Uh, does that mean like, can I come into your shop? No, 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 no. It's, it's only 9 a.m. We don't open for another two hours. Yeah. I, I anytime like, you know, prior 2020, man, I, and I would go to Europe so much and then they'd be like, Hey, we're bus going up, to dinner. Up, and I'm up. thinking like 7 p.m. And they're like, no, no, we're meeting for dinner at 9 30. And I'm like, what? That's bedtime. I, I'm like, I'm, I'm showered and relaxing in bed. Ooh. Nice, dude. I How like do you think it is to take down one of these things in like a morning? Um, the, I think it just depends thing? on the individual. <laughs> Dude, I, I've got, I've got, I've got McIntyre jeans. Um, my dad literally will drink four venti flat whites every single morning, nonstop. He's nice. just like, gush, 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 gush. oh yeah, That's I had all those twenty four seven Wall Street videos. I see you got a ring light now. He's killing it. I just and wish that he got, got captions going on. I wish that he got a little bit more attention and I don't know, like I'm not trying to say it like, cause I want my dad to be famous. I think my dad deserves to be famous because he's giving you really raw information. It's good knowledge. Yeah. It's, it's not just like uh, somebody just, you know, on, on a squawk box. It's like, he knows what he's talking about and yeah, I, I hope it keeps snowballing for him. Yeah, dude, he's a Same. fucking Titan dude. I'm, I'm pumped, pumped, pumped. Uh, Parker, what questions you got? Shoot me, shoot me. Okay. Them. So, I wanted to go back and I want to start at the beginning of this journey. And first, let's start with the rowing. What was your mindset? Why did you want to get into rowing? And where did that spark from? Like, what was like, I'm doing this shit? The paddling stuff? Yeah. Yeah, sprint canoeing. I've always wanted to be an Olympian. My grandfather right here. What are you doing? He's the man who shaped my entire life as an athlete. And he's just like my greatest inspiration as a man in athletics and in life. He just was a superstar. No offense to my dad and everything, but he just was more aligned with my lifestyle. Yeah. Um, and basically uh, he was obsessed with the Olympics. He was a master's Olympian, very successful. He always was like, Hunter, just go. Just you're the greatest. You don't know it, but you're the greatest. And I was like, what, whatever, grandpa, like I'll, I'll go fine. And then, you know, I recognize I had this opportunity and I just was like, I, I've done everything I could in this world and I could do more, but like, I would like to ascend to the level of Olympian because that's like having like a degree from MIT, Harvard, Stanford, Cambridge, all glued together. It's like the highest level of high in yeah. athletics. And I always would study sports that were something that I could do. And I studied the athletes. I'm always a study based person. I look at their muscles. I look at the leverage. I look at the power output. I look at the weight. I look at the whatever it may be that makes them unique and what makes me unique. And I was like, how can I beat them? So 2021, we're watching the Olympics um, in Rhode Island and, and we're not really competing at the time because life's fucked. And I was like, I'm going to go. I watched that sport. I was like, I'm going to beat them. So mm -hmm. over the year, I spent time calling everybody. It was like a really hard thing to get into this small community. And I finally got in. I finally got some good people. And they were very cool when I got there. And they're like, let's do it. They knew my goals. And I just started. I said, what else am I going to do in High Rocks? Like, sure, I'm going to take another minute off if I want to. But what's the difference between 55 and 54? In my heart, it's, 
it's great, but it's not the same as getting in a boat and being terrified every fucking day of losing and going up against things that are just so challenging. I have no clue where I'm going to end up. So I wanted that fire and that intensity in my life again. Um, and you know, I hope that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Okay. So then what was, what was the yeah. flip? Because everything was all in. I'm buying a boat, burn the shore, I'm moving down with the homies in San Diego and then it seems like um, it was like, all right, guys. Then Alex shot the video climbing up the mountain. Daddy's coming back. Daddy takes what daddy wants, and I'm coming. It's 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 too bad for anybody in the sport because y'all are taking second. Like, what was the change? Well, it was embarrassing. Like, so it, it's embarrassing, but it's it's understandable because I, I don't it was know kind enough of about out of your hands though. It wasn't like, um, yeah. One day I just showed up and. I don't know how this was not conveyed. Like I moved there and they knew that this was what I wanted. And we were there at practice every single day. I was like, I'm in, I'm coming to practice. I bought myself a boat. Like we're going for this, you know, like I'm, I'm in. And then one day the coach just showed up because we were originally supposed to be racing for August is the qualifier. Then all of a sudden one day he's like, it's April. And if you don't make April, then you don't make anything. And I was like, what? Uh, yeah, that's a huge I, I, difference. I can't do that. I just can't yeah. do that. That's not possible. And he's like, yeah, I know. You're in this for the long haul. And I just literally got in the boat, and I started paddling, and I had the worst session I had had like, in the past like two months, and I fell in the water a bunch of times, and I was like, my life's fucked. Mm. Like everything that I had just got behind and told everybody about and gotten invested in, talking to sponsors, talking to my friends, talking to my family, talking to my soul – just stopped. And I sat there with myself and I cried my, my man tears. Like, I don't know if I really did cry or not, but I felt like it. And then I was like, Hunter, you have the choice of sitting here and, and looking at this as the thing where you lost and you, you, you're fucked. Or you could literally just say, you know what? You can take this energy that you were going to ball into going to the Olympics and you can go right back to where you were before and, and, beat the piss out of the competitors and set records that will never be touched ever again. And I just called my coaches and said, we're on. And they're like, okay. So we started. And that was literally like a two day window. <laughs> okay. Cause that, that Ryan hit on that question that I had was like where, where your mental and emotional state was when you realized you weren't going to make the, the trials like for the, for the rowing. I mean, I didn't so, really have time to process it. Like, I think I yeah. have emotionally been, I'm not a very depressed state person. I will say over the past, like four to six months, I have been in somewhat of a slump just because of some things that have been going on. It's just been these waves and I, I study the waves. I don't let, I don't just survive the waves. I study them yeah. so that the next time it comes, I know how to face it better than the last yeah. time. And I finally came out of like the feeling of it sometime around this trip and like, I remember at one point when we were in Dubai, we, we lost, uh, we, we lost our opportunity to get to the next level and everyone was so upset. And I just saw it coming at me and rather than just letting the wave crash down on me and just being all mixed up in it all emotionally, I walked away from the table. Everybody stayed there and just kept on fighting with the judge. And I just walked away and I was like, this is another opportunity to channel this energy and go. And then I just called some people and I said, I'm skipping I'm stick, skipping Stockholm. I'm skipping Hamburg. I'm not giving my two self two chances to qualify. I'm going to go to world uh, to Barcelona and I'm going to beat the piss out of everybody. And then I'm going to go home and I'm going to go be where I need to be to get to the next level. And I did that and exactly happened. And I don't know. I'm not trying to sound all hippie ish, but it's, it's about no. not necessarily it's about lassoing these opportunities and Absolutely. grabbing a hold of it and transferring yourself into it. Don't let the thing run around circles around you and, and control the room. Like you got to control that. Yeah. If you energy. can't control or process your emotions, then you have no way of, you know, uh, sw swimming through them. Like you're just going to drown. Yep. 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 So with that, because you said, what was the deciding factor? So I have this question in that moment, did your entire mental and emotional approach to this high rocks race in Barcelona, what was different about it compared to any other high rocks? Well, like Dallas, where you set that record to where now it's like, yeah. Did this one feel different compared to everything else? I think it was just a psychological thing. Um, I think if you 
listen to anybody, ask almost any of my training partners over the past eight weeks. When I was training, I'd put these headphones on and I would just be screaming at myself all of this mental stuff, like literally shouting out loud. And I was just, I was like, yeah, there's all these things. I'm like, oh, what about that girl? What about my, this bills? What about this timeline? What about this? And I just was beating all of these monsters around me down. There's Alex. Um, big dog. Ask Alex. Alex, put down some notes and tell people all the weird shit that I was saying while I was competing. I just would be shouting at myself to psychologically break these beasts down of all of this auxiliary noise and just center myself. And I remember when I was out there per lap, I'm listening to this Paul Selig book right now. Will I admit it's the greatest? No, but does it have some interesting things? I brought myself into this place where I just kept on telling myself I had ascended to another level of awareness and capability, and I would just resonate with that idea. And by the time I had gotten out of the rock zone, started going, and my heart rate's jacked up from the sleds, the lunges, the burpees, whatever, I would be like, uh, 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 and then I would just start channeling that thing. And then the next thing you know, I'm like, boom, I am a rocket ship. And by the time I had realized what was going on, I was so centered in that moment, I was back on the inn into the next station where normally you just feel like a ship lost at sea and just being like, like oh my next? God, dude, it feels Where's my next entrance. Yeah. I'm like, oh my God, dude, I have another three minutes. I have another two or three laps. Like, and I just been channeling that. Because I think the thing is, is like if you have absolute focus, um, like if you look at a target when you're doing um, archery, you have mm -hmm. so many different circles that you can hit. The person mm -hmm. that's most aligned hits the center. And then there's points outside of that for the people who are shittier. You know what I mean? They and only see deep. one thing, and it's the dead center. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, they think that's they're it. focusing on the center, but they're still seeing that whole target. So it's like aim small, miss small. Yeah. At one point you can see Alex wrote this. They say, go to war. I was lunging and I was doing this in training and I just screamed at the lunge section. I just screamed, <laughs> go to war in front of all of these people. I'm just like, Ugh, uh, and my knees are slamming into the pavement. I'm just like, gush, gush, gush. And I'm just like, fuck it. Um, so that's, that's the difference. I think it's just level of commitment and, and, and uh, refined mental strength. Ryan, you got something? No, 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 go ahead. You're okay. on a roll, homie. All right, so now let's get into your your base training. So I feel like, and we've had a bunch of people ask this, uh, like Jay even put this on here. So when you did Ironman last year, which I was actually bummed that I didn't get to go do that with y'all, do you feel that that mental battle being on a full Ironman course, plus all the cardio behind it, really helps set a great base going into this yeah i think for me like everybody probably recognizes at this point i call myself the bulk pony i'm probably like the most muscular person in our sport i don't need any more muscle to do what i'm doing i love muscle though it's just part of my heart and soul <laughs> um so what i like to do in the off seasons like i started right after high rocks world championships last year we went to a bunch of um bike races all around colorado between seven and ten thousand feet on a single speed bike it's just brutal. And then as oh, soon yeah. as that was done, started training up for Swim Room World Championships, which I didn't end up getting done, but that was just another ton of cardio. And then I went into Ironman, which is another ton of cardio. And it's these bigger things that are just these monster tasks to accomplish. It, it allows you to all of a sudden take something that's 59 minutes, but far more intense. Take the energy of a 10 hour Ironman and compact it into one hour. It's 10 times the amount of intensity. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it does that base building does create a significant amount of power and capability. Um, and I, I truly love it. And I don't think everyone needs to do it, but that's where my heart and soul is. Like I'm planning on going to high rocks world championships. And then I would love for you to come. I think we're all going to do a big group. Um, I'll rent as a house. We're going to do the Ironman in Copenhagen, or we're going to do the Keltman, which is that really, really hard Ironman distance in Scotland. Oh, cool. Hmm. All right. July 15th or 18th. Yeah, that sounds badass. Yeah, yeah there's Are a lot of already races signed up for that one. Uh, no, I'm, I'm manifesting it. I've been gotcha. contacting these race directors. I say, hey, baby, you want the ball pony to show up? Let's do this. They're like, registration's <laughs> full. I'm like, not for me. Let's go. <laughs> do you want your race to get noticed or do you just want your race to just kind of putter? 
Yeah, no, when Michael but, Jordan shows up, there's an extra seat in the house. Yeah, like, listen, I, I think it's understandable that people all sign up for these things and there's rules to the system and stuff, but yeah. there's always those spaces where you try to bring people in that are going to encourage new communities to come in and get involved. In Absolutely. Your race. And I think that's very valuable to the community. Like, for Battle Bunker this year, we are inviting, um, like, first responders, military people, nurses, all these kind of things – to come in and you don't even have to qualify because we want to honor those people, but also expand the community a little bit. So Absolutely. it's good for these events to do that kind of stuff. Yeah. So you tell one person, they tell two people, they tell two people. And two when million. you have a firsthand experience, it's even better. Yeah. Yeah. Daddy. I like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let's go in. What was, okay. So leading into Barcelona. Oh, well, let's talk about the government games. Yeah. yeah, yeah or, let, or Dubai. Yeah. Let's talk about that. Yeah. We were all leading up. You had the intro with Rasmin Rasmussen. I, I I know I pronounce his name. We we had uh, Cole Daddy Schwartz, few others, and leading into it, you know, it was this big hype. Uh, twenty twenty, shut it all down. Now you're back, team of five. You show up, and the first day, I think we saw uh, uh, Kempson set the world record or set the the course record for the police's. Uh, uh, obstacle course race that the, the the police go through. How did that go? Did did you well, guys like an honor? That was that badge? wasn't part of the uh, that wasn't part of the games. It was like just something that we went and did. The police department like brought us over there. There's this guy Saud who's really cool, and they wanted to bring us around and show us stuff. Um, that was awesome. I'm gonna try to make this as uh, PC or I don't even PC is the right word. I'm gonna try to tame this conversation as much as possible. It wasn't what we thought it was going to be. Mm. Um, we went over there expecting it to be this competition. There was probably only like three other teams that really cared. And we were one of those three teams, like, you know, three teams that really cared. You know, the Danish team. Uh, what about the Colorado team? Well, VJ Jones. I, they, I, I think they cared, there, but yeah. you could tell they didn't care the way we did. And oh. like, there were some people that really, really worked their butt off. And the thing that was crazy is like, we got over there and we went after rules that were designed to protect the system and protect the players. And we played by the rules. And by the end, we ended up at the end of the first day in 12th place, which doesn't bring you into finals. Mm -hmm. We go to contest it. And, you know, these guys basically looked at us and they were like, Hey, uh, I was like, hey, listen, I was a team captain. I was like, listen, I listened to the rule system. You guys put these rules down where basically like there's, there's three stages to every event. There's stage one, which is worth five points, stage two, 10 points, stage three, 15 points. Stage four is pressing the buzzer after the stage three. Equates to 20 points. And then also sometimes there's bonus buzzers, but there's no need to talk about that. There is a ref next to you the entire time telling you whether or not you did it right and whether or not you have to go back. So if you're doing it wrong, go back, reset, go back, reset. By those rules, we played. And by those rules, we dominated. We were top four for sure. Mm -hmm. Afterwards, you know, there you have to the judge has to either call us back or they have to do these like afterwards things, but it has to be addressed in the moment to potentially lose points later on. And we were never addressed in the moment and we dominated. And then they gave us these really dog shit points and we went and talked to them. And they were like, I was like, hey, let's just be honest here. You have a set of rules that are here to protect us. And there's a set of rules to here to fuck us. And you're only exercising the ones that are here to fuck us. And he's like, that's right. Basically, he was like, <laughs> yeah, we, we know that you're right, but we're not going to spend, not, more, time. Not we're gonna 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 spend more time addressing this right now. We're moving on to the next thing. So oh, in my mindset, like I will not go back and compete at the government games. I think that yeah. they're cool. I think it's great for people that want to go participate. If you're a professional athlete, I would not suggest that you go. I don't think that they know what they're doing fully. I don't think that they um, – I think they're spending a tremendous amount of money. I think they're really inspiring their community out there. I think that's very cool. But do I think that it's a place for people like myself, like a person that goes to set world records and dominate the world? No. I think it's more like Disneyland. Like go for mm -hmm. a ride. Have fun. You're in Dubai. Have fun um, in this yeah. crazy More of an fun experience sport, versus points race. are. And I, and points I totally are took it as an experience. I'm so gracious yeah. that they flew us out there. They set us up. The community out, even outside of it, the community was amazing. Like, I really think that's really cool. I think there are also people that are very built on respect, like basically their reputation around there and the way they talk about each other. They yeah. really care. So me saying this, and if they ever got back to them, I bet you they'd be incredibly insulted. And I'm not here to insult you. I'm here to improve you. I want you guys to know that you yeah. created a flawed system. And I don't play on flawed, you know, flawed playing fields. Like I even personally, when we were, um, when we did the battle bunker, we had some 
mix-ups. And I personally had to go back, and I'm the race director. I had to go back and just sit in a room and refix math that my team had fucked up. And I really held it accountable. I recognized they fucked up. I went back and I rectified it. And these guys weren't willing to do that at all. And they weren't even willing to explain themselves. So Yeah, but that's going to not – but what you were doing and versus what they are not willing to do will – help you build and bring more true competition to the, you know, to the event versus uh, we're going to keep it lax. It's just going to be an experience for everybody else and taking on that responsibility and changing the rules, listening to the people that have been invited and that are competing to make it fair. Cause I think at the end of the day, true professionals want a fair to fair matchup, not just for them, but for their competitors to know that they're not being gifted a first place. They want to know that they're earning it. Totally. And I don't want to diminish anybody else's results there. I think everyone who showed up did the best of their abilities and they deserve to get the points that they got. I just think that there's some people like myself who got undercut by the system. Yeah. And I'm just in the position of my career where I've been doing this for so long. It's like, there's some things you can really sit there and focus and cry about. And then there's other things that you just like, whatever. It's like, what, why waste your energy? Yeah. Um, like Control at world championships at high rocks you're, last you're year, screaming at a brick wall. Yeah, at world champion. Yeah, at world championships of high rocks last year, they took a plate off of the sled because it was too heavy for the guys to push. Does that help me at all? No. Did I complain about it? No, because I was just like, I can't control it. Only thing I can control is run faster than everybody else. At the same race, they also told me to go out and uh, a lane short on the burpees, and then they penalized me afterwards. Truly, the head judge, which was my judge, sent me out, and I just followed what he told me to do. And then they penalized me afterwards. Was it my control? No, I just still focus on winning. And like sitting there when these like systems screw up and complaining about it, like I've recognized in the so many years of doing these things that there's just like, if it's out of your control, then why the fuck are you gripping onto it so hard? It's like, yeah. just let go of it. So um, ideally like, you know, that's, that's my opinion on it all. I'm solid though. I mean, I think that's, you know, that, that type of experience, though, really helps us get into like what we don't get to see, right? Like for everybody that's going to listen to this or who's watching it right now, like that, that's part of the fun of, you know, these talks, these interviews, these podcasts is so we were like, oh, man, we're getting the whole scoop. We're, yeah, I don't know, think a lot of people it. like to be honest about it because yeah. they're nervous that they're not going to get the opportunity again. I'm not nervous. Yeah. I'm not nervous. If they don't call me whatever um so i mean like spartan games is probably going to happen again spartan games is probably the worst run uh participation event ever and it's supposed to be high level with big cash prizes really really poorly run they will probably not call me again and that's okay but at least i had the opportunity to stand up and tell the truth um yeah. and the authenticity people... is why people are here yeah yeah i appreciate that what's up next boys what you got what you got boys <laughs> Appreciate Brian. it. So then you jumped after Dubai. Uh, you traveled to uh, Cyprus, and yep. within the Cyprus time, along with Tom and Dina's uh, Hogan camp, uh, was uh, old boy's birthday. And no then did deal. you climb? Did you climb? I'm gonna say it wrong. Machu Picchu. And then was it a bike or did you actually like hike it? With, with a walking stick. So what happened was, this is another one of those things where it's like out of your control. Don't complain. I go, I go rent this bike. Alex and I both rent bikes. And I'm like, I'm going to go up to the top of Mount Olympus. This is supposedly where the gods live. And I was like, oh, I should go meet the gods. Fucking let's have a combo, bro. But I'm not just going to show up in a car. I'm going to bike from where I'm at up 6,000 feet to the top of Mount Olympus. And I'm going to go talk it out with these boys. That's the authentic sure. way. That's a way to serve. That's a way to have a birthday, at least in my book these days. I've, I and totally dig it. Then all of a sudden I get a phone call from a group that um, I was connected with out there. My buddy, uh, Lucas Storath, who used to be, uh, he and I used to compete against each other in high rocks. He knew a training group out there that was a triathlon group. They connect me. They're like, we're going up and we're going to, we're going to ride to Olympus tomorrow. And I was like, perfect. So I just show up and we just start biking. I'm with, eight people, like most four men, four women, you know, that none of them are superhero athletes. They're just, but they're fit. I mean, like I'm, by the end of this thing, I realized I was like, holy shit. <laughs> so we start going and I'm just like riding. And all of a sudden I'm like, this really does not feel like we're going to Olympus. And I'm like talking to some people they're like, yeah, we're going. And then all the people are like, no, we're not. 
And then all of a sudden I get into like, like a quarter or a third of the way through this ride. And they're like, yeah, we're going nowhere near there. And I was like, okay, so that dream's gone. Wow. Um, <laughs> let's keep on riding. And now all of a sudden we're riding and, you know, it was supposed to be like a leisurely five to six hour ride. Leisurely. Yeah. Um, oh, I've been on those. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, it's only about 2000 meters of climbing, maybe like, you know, about, you know, up to 6,000 feet, which, which is a lot but it's yeah. not crazy. Um, okay. So halfway through this thing, we lose half the group and now we're just riding. It's just four ladies and I, and they're all German speaking. This is a German training group. So none of them can really speak English that well. So I'm basically by myself yeah. and with a bunch yeah. of people that can't speak English. And yeah. we've, I've only brought enough fuel for like a leisurely ride. And I was thinking I was going to stop off in places and get snacks because like we had this route it yeah. goes on to find out that we are now in the middle of what I find out is an 85 mile long bike ride, the longest bike ride I've ever done in my life because it, the Iron Man was 112, but it wasn't like this bike ride. This is through the fucking mountains. Uh, yeah, where you also have to have your own fuel. You can't stop off and refuel. It's no. you're on normal roads. It's not, you know, there, there's no safety <laughs> involved. <laughs> so I'm basically by myself mentally on this journey because they. I'm like, how are you? They're like, good. I'm like, Good what's enough. going on? Good. What is going on with you? You don't have any any water. <laughs> no, I, I wish I had water. I, I wish I had that level of conversation. I was getting <laughs> nothing out of these people. And you know, we're just going. It ends up being 85 miles and 10,000 feet of climbing. And now it's so late in the day because we had to stop so many times. It's starting to get cold. And we're on oh. top of a mountain, you know, almost 5,000 feet in the sky. And I'm soaking wet in sweat, and now it's just freezing. And I'm oh. not ready for this. I'm not ready for this. And we have now 30 miles downhill back to the ocean. And these women, are, they're a bit older than me. And, like, you can tell things were starting to go bad for them because this woman was so tired one time. She tried to bike up this steep hill. She couldn't get it, so she had to turn around, catch the bankment, and then ride up and grind her way out. I was like, we're mm. all going to die. I was like, if I <laughs> – and at this point, I basically just said to one of the women, I was like, hey – I have to start pedaling or I'm going to freeze to death. Like I'm just cold. So I'm yeah. going to start going. Like we're all going home. Like we gave each and, other and that the is nod. the worst feeling I have been there. Cause you're like, I know I'm not going to actually get comfortable, but I just need to exhaust myself to the point where it's like, I'm just, just trying to survive. We just got to go. And I'm convinced I'm telling Alex, I'm like, these women are going to die. Like these women, <laughs> I was like, I was, whoever planned this thing has no fucking clue what they planned. This is way. Where did the boys ago. go? You said got, it started out with eight. Where did lost. those guys go? Oh, lost. Jesus. So these guys got lost. Now it's just <laughs> me and these ladies. And, oh, and I'm just like, guys, I'm out. Like, I'm not ditching them. I'm just like, we all know where we're going. Like, all right, let's go. Like, everybody's so cold. Like, let's go. So I somehow, like, I get back. And, and finally, I'm, we started this ride at 830 in the morning. Now it's 530 at night. Um, so nearly uh. 10 hours later. And no, it, it was almost, it was six, I think. And I, I'm just like, I get there and I go to the section where we all locked in and there's a bike area downstairs. All the old ladies are there ahead of me. I was like, where the fuck did you guys pass me? I was like, I thought you were all going to be dead. I thought it was going to be in body bags on the mountain. They all beat me. And so by the end of the thing, I was just so. Was there incredibly- a cutoff? I mean, listen, you're going through these mountains and they're like this, like this is the roadmap. And you're like just picking uh, lines. I'm like looking and I'm like, this has got to be the one like, you know, you're going downhill the majority yeah, of the yeah. time. So, I mean, I was inspired. So I was did like, you take if, extra mileage that they did not take? Like there was a shortcut that they, they between five through. and eight miles maybe, but it's nothing crazy. No. Oh. Dang. Okay, so let's. Okay, so is that the end of that whole trip with the bike and everything? Were that, or we're uh, we're getting into the training group there, though. I mean, it was good. Was, I did. Yeah. I, look at this. Alex said he did text the ladies next day, and they said they were okay. <laughs> uh, Alex, if you ask Alex, I literally thought these women were dying. Like, there's so many times it's probably on film. I'm like, these women are dead. Like, I'm sorry, but like, you know, eventually you get to that point where like the airplanes crash, and they're like, hey, listen, we need to get over the top of this mountain in this pass. Someone needs to go for help. If the rest die, that's part of the process. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, I was did like, oh my God. Zach Chopper coming out to him because somebody didn't get enough water. Dude. 
No, 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 no. There is nothing that was going to happen out there other than just they'd be left on that mountaintop. Yeah. I, I, I am just inspired. So that's why I went as hard as I could when I got to Cypre, uh, so, to Barcelona because at that point I was just like, I, these women can do this. I can do anything. So you keep having these moments. Think about it. Like, uh, and, like, and I'm following this story, and it's you kept having one thing that inspired another thing where you were pulling inspiration and then pulling inspiration. And it's all this like perfect storm lead up, it seems, by the time you got to Barcelona for the High Rocks, where you could fall back mentally, emotionally, and everything onto these events prior that helped you, you know, approach this to be in a mental, emotional state for that race different than before. I'm a very particular person. When I want something to happen, I get it done the way I wanted to get done. Just over these past couple months, I've just like let go. It's like, I still am going to pursue what I would yeah. want to get done. But if all of a sudden something happens that just completely doesn't align with that and I lose control, I'm like, all right, we're still on this path and let's just ride it out. And it's just, I don't know. I don't know if it's been the greatest thing that's ever happened to me, but it, it seems to be working out well. Holding less stress. No stress, dude. I, I, yeah, it's, I cut a bunch of people out of my life um, over the past couple months, and I just recognize when you don't make noise, you don't hear noise. So when you're the person who is basically playing tennis with somebody else that's creating drama in your life, whether it's like a real like a real person or just an inanimate thing, it's going to fight back, and you're just going to keep on playing into it. It's like you know, you ever grab a rope? If you grab a rope from a dog and it starts tugging, like that's yeah. your fault. If you let go of that rope, the dog's done. He's like, okay, yep. I'm not fighting anybody now. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think people understand how much stress really does drag you down. Like unneeded stuff that you are literally the one, you know, they want to put the blame on somebody else. But I'm like, dude, well, they're baiting you. And you just keep stoking the fire as much as you're allowing them to stoke your fire. Like y'all are just spraying lighter fluid on each other. Like just stop and walk away from it. Agreed. <laughs> like, all right, bye. I'm, I'm too tired for this shit. I'm moving on. There you go. So Cyprus camp. Yeah. Hamandina's Cyprus camp. That is a cool place, dude. Cy camps is a cool place. I got to give a shout out to those guys. Really, really, really awesome. Looks cool. Yeah. Yeah. They had all the exercise equipment right there. What looked like right around the pool. Yeah. I basically took, I used Tom like a pinata. I just was like, Tom, I'm going to do this workout with you. And I just beat the fuck out of him. I was like, what? <laughs> ah! I was like, I'm going to put all of my hurt and anger into you, Tom, and see if it uh, if it's going to pay off for these races. So if we did a run he's workout this weekend, yeah, he's going to do well. He, he just got knocked well. out of the top 15. So he's he's got something something to fight for. If Tom doesn't qualify, he has to fly over here to the United States and join my training camp. Mm. Yeah. Poor Tom. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, so so you did a uh, high rock sim and you got like fifty two. Yep, I did a high rock sim every single week for the last think, eight weeks. I think a big factor that something that we can't even account for is just the rock zone size because yes, all the stations have the thousand meter row, a thousand meter ski. You know, all the stations have the same twelve and a half meter back and forth or sled push and sled pull. But then what is different? That is just, you know, variation of what what destination that you're going to is how they set up that rock zone. And, you know, that could be the two minutes that you had the sim versus what you did in on on actual, you know, race day. But uh, how, how do you think that uh, that went over for you from race sim to, OK, why didn't you get that 52 minute? Well, I, I always just would add I would do my race simulations and I would always add two to four minutes and in race simulations, no matter what you do, it's not like go ski or grow or wall ball. Like everything is not perfectly designed. My home doesn't, isn't shaped like that. So when I, and yeah. also these gyms specifically, like when I was doing the high rock simulation in, in, um, in, uh, Cyprus, like I was having to like run upstairs and then I was having to like go out and go and do like a dirt parking lot around trees and stuff. And then I was having to mm -hmm. do burpees this way. It, none of it was perfect, but I still would add on two to four minutes so low side, I was like, okay, I just did a 52. High side, I did a 54. You know, low side, I did a 53. High side, I did a 57. Like it would always, I would just do that. And, you know, whatever. You're never going to be able to do anything perfect in training. But if you obviously train hard enough, should go well in racing. Yeah. Yep. Train like you race. Train like you fight. 
So, so now you're at Barcelona, and there's been a lot of controversy back and forth that uh, now this year, uh, 2020 or 23, 24, 22, 23 season that they've standardized the plates that are used on the sleds. They standardize the target zones that you're throwing the wall balls up to and, you know, more standardization across the board from UK destination races versus U S destination races. Could you tell, you know, you cut another minute and over a minute off your time from a USA course. Could you tell that there was, more of a standardization and you're like, no, I'm pushing the sled on butter versus, and, and they hand you a, a can of Pam to, to ice your, your, your sleds over there versus like what we have over here in the States. It was, it was not the course I wanted. It was not like those sleds. Easier, if you, harder. It was harder than I thought harder. it was going to be. It was wow. way harder. Cause if you go look at the sled times, let's just do this real quick. If you go look at the sled times there, is this it's cold it's gross uh bah, 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 bah. i took a screenshot of this thing and it should be here somewhere i don't know where it is we're having a really oh here we go um my sled push was 225 like most of my sled pushes are within 15 to 20 seconds of that so it was not crazy faster it just mm-hmm. wasn't and I'm in really good shape. Is that a puppy? Yeah. He's well, not pu- my wife's leaving, so he's the new guy to the family. <laughs> wow, that Aww. thing's sweet, dude. Yeah. That's awesome. But he uh, follows her everywhere, so she had to hand him to me. <laughs> yeah. My sled pull was basically one-to-one with most of my sled pulls. Like, mm-hmm. it's within – it's within, and I just – admittedly, I'm in good shape. Um you know, my rock zone time was 4.06, so it's not a very small rock zone. My run time was 27.43. Like, most of my runs are Gosh, 29. Your runs are three and a half minutes long. Average. Yeah. So, Jeez. nothing in here was really that crazy. And, like, I went against all the guys that have been racing in Europe all along, and I beat all their sled times. Like, I just did. Mm-hmm. And... and it wasn't anything crazy. I mean, like Tiago, I always use Tiago. I'm sorry, Tiago. Tiago ran a 57.30 um, earlier this year, and then he just ran a 62 at this event. It's not like I have personally never gone to an event and all of a sudden just been, you know, five plus minutes off of my good times. So it's not a particularly fast course. It just was the course that I ended up going fast on. Um, yeah. And as far as like the wall balls, like I even could have gone faster on the wall balls, but you know, no offense to the guys who created this rig, but it was made of metal that would go like this. The yeah. Metal I saw in the that States in some of the highlights was rigid. So when I would be doing the wall balls, I got no rep a couple times because I would go too short because if you got on the top end and it was wobbling back, it would slap the ball and you catch here rather than catching here. Oh shit. So, yeah, why did they make it like that? And why does it have two different zones? Well, it's just low zone for women, high zone for guys. But because okay. of the metal and how thick it is, it just allows it like, you know, if you took like a, a hard piece of steel, that's yeah. like, you know, probably an inch thick, there's no wobble to it. If you take a half inch thick one, it will wobble like yeah. that. So it's just the density of the metal. So um, you're saying U.S. steel is better than German steel. hundred <laughs> um, percent. You are yeah, saying- but, uh, Ooh, America. <laughs> uh, I nothing that happened was particularly better than anything I had witnessed before. I will say the course was really good for going fast. Um, by the time we raced, there was not many people on it. They had a fast lane, and the, this is what they should be doing. On one side of it, mostly they had somebody going like this to get people out of the fast lane. So yeah, normally I would be going around about dodging about five to seven people per lap. And let's just say I have to slow down for about a half to a full second for each of these people because I'm deviating. Just like one, yeah, two, three, four. Just going and, around, and you could potentially. Just, yeah, it's not just like, the overall I'd be like time. On a track. It, you're you're like on a track course everyone has their own lane so everyone has the same equidistance it's it's yep. 
you're you're duck dodging and diving. Yeah. And, yeah. and that's a lot of extra energy that I don't think 100%. people realize. Like if you can just stay a steady path and you don't have to move around these people, it's not just a time, you know, uh, a time penalty on you. It's, it's an energy tax as well. Yeah. Cause, it, because then that means that instead of just locking in to the track, mentally now you're like you're having to navigate all this stuff you're doing lateral movements it's it's just a lot in general so i, I do wish that they would when they have the fields like y'all just either run it solo for that hour with no one else on the course but i get it you know time management for the whole day or just make it a clear cut like if you're not a pro and we catch you anywhere in these lanes you get a two minute time penalty yeah yeah I think so. I think so. And, or even 30 know, seconds for every time that you get caught in, in that pro lane. Yeah. I don't know how they're going to, they're going to enforce that. Time but penalize it, it, people. It, it, it makes a big, it made a big difference. So those yeah. times on the running were very reflective of the fact, fact that it was probably the best running course I've ever done. Oh, okay. That's cool. Yeah, so that's really, a good, really good. Yeah. Like even Vegas last year, because there was nobody else out there, this was a better running course. It just was designed better. Oh, huh. sweet. Yeah. Did it feel like the distance was a little bit? Because I know we talked about that once before in the past. Like you're like, man, I felt like that course was a little long on the run. Uh, no, I mean, it, it, supposedly like it was a little bit short on the runs, but the rock zone was fucking massive. Like I could have taken an extra 30 seconds off because what happened was is they had the rock zone like this, the in, the out. And, you know, when you came on the end, dude, you had to run a good 20 plus seconds Mm. across to get to this section i had to do that three times yeah um that transition now, zones do play a big part yeah transition zones but also the thing was i went for water every single lap because it was very hot in there because it mm. was just it collected heat that room yeah so i had to go in i'd have to backtrack go get water and then come out so that was about five seconds every single time so it, it was it normally you i I have water set up for me. So it was not yeah. good. It was not good. Like that. Really, do you feel like that's something high rocks could do better setting I mean, up listen, that if, aid stations? Yeah. I mean, listen, if you want to start professionalizing these events, if you go yeah. look at a, a world-class marathon, like the water tables are right next to the run track. They're not in the center because it's convenient for them to set it oh, up. Oh yeah. There. Any, any running event, uh, uh, triathlons, all of that kind of stuff. Those aid stations are, you know, actual run <laughs> yeah, yeah it was they also right there it was also super stupid and dangerous because literally people were coming in and sipping water and then dumping water all over the entrance and the exit area so like if you think about it you go in and the cut right it was dumb um I, you know yeah. it, that's how people slip and just like crush themselves on the pavement especially when you're going as hard as we are and we've got these like you know just slip shoes oh no yeah good. no fucking good so after you come off of that, you know, one of the questions that we had on some of the, the Instagram uh, replies were like, how do you do in injury prevention routine? And then just kind of how do you structure your uh, rest days with within your your training as well? Well, first of all, I went and got as drunk as I possibly could. <laughs> That was another um, question. How many pints? <laughs> uh, I got as drunk as I possibly could. Mostly Alex got fucking hammered. I spent a lot of the night worrying where Alex was. Like we were at a club and everyone's like, don't worry about Alex. And I was like, shut your fucking mouth. I'm He's going to find my cousin. <laughs> I was like, the gypsies are after him. So I was like, Aw. um, so I got pretty, pretty drunk. Um, but I only got drunk because everyone else was getting drunk. I'm very easily peer pressured. Uh, I, I had a good time but that's life dude like you have to celebrate things and i just it's, yeah. it's such a i didn't want to go to the city and spend time in my 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 place and then go to a venue and then go back home like it's so great being able to city see a city from the standpoint of going out and going to we're pub crawling going around restaurants to bars and barcelona is such a cool city yeah. it's like a maze it's really it's, a maze. it is really cool and you end up going through all these back streets and there's all these fun people being all fucking oh, weird yeah it's, it's a great culture. And, um, I did that. I didn't get to recover that well. I'll be honest. Like that's part of the reason why I came home. I was like, there's, there's, there's no win for me anymore. I don't need to book another ticket to go to another country to go hang out with more people. Um, it's time to go home. So that's just a smart move in general though. It's like, you know, listening to yourself to be like, all right, I'm, I'm getting out of here. I'm getting back to my comfort zone. I did what I did to crush and I needed a little bit of that R and R. Home sweet home, baby. I'm yeah. so pumped to be back. 
Yeah, we're happy to have you back stateside, man. Yeah, it's a good place. It's a good place. Any, to be. any advice? I'm going to quote this. Any advice for CrossFit athlete looking to fuck with high rocks? Run more. I was just going to say the same. Cardio. Yeah. Be a yeah, cardio bulk pony. Yeah. Don't. Yeah, dude. I think you got to get a good program. Uh, house training. No big deal. I think just a good program will get you away from there. You're not going to get weak. You're not going to get worse at CrossFit. You'll probably get better at CrossFit. But don't lie to yourself. You're a CrossFitter, not a runner. So start running. All right. What was the best meal you had? Whether it be Dubai, Cyprus, Bar- Barcelona. Ooh, food. Was the wine flowing <laughs> like the water of the gods? I mean, Dubai had great food because the restaurants were great, but it wasn't great food. But I will say we had this one meal with my buddy uh, Rashid. That was probably the most authentic and incredible meal that we had of all of them because Rashid is basically like a god king there. He's one of, He's been part of the police force for like 30 years, and he took us to this authentic restaurant, which you would have thought was like a dog crap place, but it's like a kebab shop. Oh, and those are pictures, always the best, dude. It, dude. There was pictures of every celebrity you ever seen, like L- L- Messi – uh, Messi was there. Ronaldo was there. Superstar awesome. actors were there, and it was just insane. Where was and this? We, I, we got our picture up on the wall too. It was it's in Dubai. it was in Dubai. Oh, and the owner of the restaurant like immediately came up and like was like flexing. The whole people started celebrating when we were in there. People who were not even part of the restaurant, they're just eating. They're like, ah, and you're just like, <laughs> wow, this is yeah. so authentic and That's loving. Cool. And, you know, every single city had a version of that. Um, yeah. Probably the most exquisite restaurant that we went to was the last night I was in Barcelona. We took um, the tram across the whole skyline as the sun was setting to a restaurant on top of a mountain. And I just did it with my friends. And it was just – it was beautiful. It was just like there is a reason to travel the world so yeah. that you can have these moments of being like, hey, my backyard's cool. My comfort level's cool. But it's important for us to see – because we – Europe does it different. Like the way that they care to establish and create history and structure and just beauty, they actually care. It's an art. Here they're like, we're going to build a skyscraper 10 feet taller than the last one. That's their <laughs> yeah. version. And, of it's, design. and they're hideous. Like the architecture is like so modern. I'm like, it looks yeah. cool today and it's going to be ugly tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, <laughs> it's really cool. So you're overlooking the whole city and it's just, it's a very yeah. beautiful experience. I got a question for you because um, in uh, Dubai, so I did a report and I got kind of obsessed with Dubai uh, from college. I had to do a couple of projects on it, but the the Palm de Jumeiras, there's like two of them and, and the little island, sand islands that were drudged up from the ocean to make these man-made little sand islands. And then yeah. also, uh, I, I forget the tennis stars, but they, they got to play tennis on top of one of these things. Is it just like – tall skyscrapers that that it is an attraction site or it's like it looks like the movie tron okay it looks like the movie tron it's a video game like we were at a top of a rooftop bar and we were looking out and i was like this looks exactly like a bunch of graphic designers came in and made a screensaver and it's actually a city um Hmm. yeah i heard it's pretty cool the designs that they're going with there are far above and beyond anything anywhere else in the entire world. Like they are spending money at a level and designing things at a level that nobody else in the world's trying to do. And they're doing it at like 100 X the speed. When you go to some of these other countries and I'll admit there's probably people being abused so that the capabilities of this like capacity is at the level that it's at, but it makes you feel so stupid that you live in the United States. Cause I remember, I'll never forget. It took them almost two years to finish the California incline, which is a 200 meter long, uh, uh, road going up. It's an entryway to Santa Monica. And I was like, that's my government. That explains the United States to a T there's the Republican party, the Democrat party. And then there's every asshole underneath that needs to get paid. And yeah. they still can't get the job done. Where in these countries over here, they're just like, we're going to do this. People will probably get hurt in the process, but at least it will get done. You're like, Kind of appreciate that. That's like, uh, what was it, Japan? Uh, in the last, like, what was it, 10 years, there was like a sinkhole, and in literally four days it was fixed and looked like it never happened. Yeah. Yeah. It's incredible. If you know, that was in California, it'd probably still be there five years later. Oh, yeah. They'd be talking about it. They're like, uh, you know, I feel like, how are we going to address the homeless people? Yeah. Like, and it'd be like a $150 million dollar project. You go in the sinkhole. <laughs> okay so what have you got planned well you know what somebody had a question so let's touch on this real quick and then that way we can and then we'll move on it says what was your weekly training schedule like when you were doing sims every week yeah 
I'll admit, I told my coach this last night. I was like, I wasn't able to do almost any of the training that you told me to do because I just didn't have the resources available to me. But I tried to make sure that I was doing about two to three hours of cardio a week. I would do one to two weightlifting sessions a week. And then I would focus almost entirely on my energy being primed for those high rock simulations, even though I drank a couple times the night before. But whatever, that's just part of the puzzle. But uh, Carb load. Yep. Yep. Also, you don't get hung over. No matter how much you drink, you don't get hung over. I feel less great than I did the day before, but yep. um, you know, not it's like the way that you guys did going to the desert that one day. That was a big topic of conversation. We told that story a bunch of times. <laughs> help! Exactly. Help! Call the police! The sun can't get water. Oh no! The sun's coming out. Ah! <laughs> like some vampires, like get away from the sun. Well, wait. So when you were training, did you have bar? But I mean, you were over there. You obviously can't take barbells and plates. So, like, were you doing deadlifts and and zercher lunges and and have you you said I didn't have access to the equipment that your coach had set up for you? So then. What equipment did you have? And then what in Cyprus, I had everything that I wanted, but then all of a sudden you'd go to a gym in Dubai. And then all of a sudden the person that was supposed to meet me to get into the gym in Dubai didn't show up. Um, You know, we go to a gym in Dubai and I'm there to go train. Yet everybody else is like, there's all of a sudden a kid's class with 50 kids there. Mm. And it's like, it's just not like this. If you want to be the best person in the world, you get the best opportunities to be the best person in the world. There's a reason why I live on top of the mountains away from people so that I can just do what I need to do. Yeah. You know, I don't go to gyms and say, Hey, can I use this piece of equipment? I buy it and I use it in my house. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, okay. So now we're back here. You're back in the States. What is your plan this week? And what is the next stop? And what is your plan of attack? If, even if you have one yet, I'm like going to pump schedule. Uh, training starts hard on Monday. Training camp starts hard April 1st. Um, technically I'll go all the way until April 23rd to hopefully race Anaheim. If that's in the schedule. Okay. So tons of volume leading up to that. I'm just going to well, kill I might myself. Be going to that one. I rock damn, Anaheim. Damn daddy. You coming oh, yeah. over? Oh shit. Yeah. If you guys all want to come, I'll put you guys all up at the house in Malibu by then. Um, right. Yep. Uh, other than that, uh, intensity will start late April, like the really intense stuff where you're just, you know, running so hardcore. All the yeah. athletes are going to come out and put the work in. You know, I need a fast person. I need a strong person. I need positive people. So there's a collective group. Uh, Kyle will come out. He's going to be – he's he'll be a cheerleader because he's fat and slow. Um so, I think he and his, his double partner just qualified for uh, for world championships. I heard they're going. I heard they're going. You know what, Kyle? That's that's a big moment for you. Kyle is such a pussy, though. The other day he told me he was chewing on a piece of bread that it broke his tooth. That's the, oh, that's so the softest bloody. thing I've ever heard. Bread broke my tooth. Oh, are you just, a jawbreaker? No. And it wasn't multi If I had to guess, nothing. Kyle probably still has some of his baby teeth. That's how big of a pussy he is. Uh. <laughs> Broke his well, tooth chewing well, bread. Well, isn't his pastime? Isn't his favorite of? pastime wow. to sit in a boat and hunt ducks? You just sit there all day. Yeah, it's a soft thing to do, dude. Especially when you have a cannon. A high and you're going against ducks. If I'm going against ducks, dude, I exclusively I use rocks in my fists. Yo, the last time we went hunting, I was like, "Yo, man, bring me some of that. Uh, bring me some of that meat from when you go yeah. hunt." I never heard from him. Oh. I guess he didn't get anything. He didn't get nothing. He's shitty at it. He just he just pays to go hang out with people. I, I honestly think there's some other we can, under, I, underlying I, I things. I can buy like a little <laughs> canoe and sit in my garage and get, get the same results. Nope, birds didn't hit today. <laughs> nope. Good point, Kyle. I hope you're listening to this thing. hope you're listening to this He's thing. not even here to defend himself. No, of course uh, not. Okay, so and then are you going to be doing any – because I, I know that this is probably on people's minds. Um, uh, what is your are, – are you going to get – going into the next race, going into worlds, are you going to be really going after the nutrition side of it? Not only the workout, are you going to fine tune your diet more? Yeah, I have to. I, yeah. That's why I got a call with that Regan girl. Like I'm pretty dialed with my diet, but I always like yeah. to have conversations with people just so yeah. that I can like dig in, dig out, dig in, dig out, keep on yeah. having this ping pong perspective. So, um, I'll align myself a diet, put it on a piece of paper. I do these things. And I just stick it everywhere I go so that there's no question get on my fitness pal, dial it in. Um, 
you know, we're really, this is where nutrition comes really important. Like we literally, people think I'm just selling products. Like I take my products every single day just from different companies and now they're all built and they're going to be in products to, to you guys. So supplements become so dialed at this point in time. Nutrition becomes super yep. dialed at this point in time. People like to use the 80-20 method. 80% of the year, I'm pretty dialed with my food and I'm relaxed about it. 20% of the year, I'm militant about my mm. food. Yeah. So this is where I get into that chapter where everything is going to be perfectly organized. I've couple co contacted a couple of nutrition companies that make these pre-made meals, and I just say, "Hey, listen, I don't want money. You just have to send me 100 to 200 meals a week to feed myself and all my friends. If you're willing to do that, we'll support you." So a couple of companies will send us out meals, um, and we'll just boogie. We'll go to war. I like that. Yeah, yeah I think uh, I think a lot of people really. You, you know, they think that nutrition like, yeah, but if I'm working out this hard, I can kind of, I can eat McDonald's. I, I, I can, I can eat this it. here and there or whatever. And I'm like, dude, that, that is just as important, if not more important in your recovery process leading into your recovery from that day. And then giving, getting you ready for the following day. Like don't poison yourself, like give your body what it needs. And then instead of bitching about like, well, why don't I feel that great? And it's like, well, you didn't give your body the recovery you eat? Yeah. that you need from, from the fuel. Yeah. I, I, I can already feel like I knew about two weeks into being into this trip. I was like, I'm not eating enough. And actually it's yeah. interesting when I eat the proper amount, I actually lose weight faster. So I'm that's to lose what I'm going through pounds. Yeah, right now. I I'm losing weight and, uh, or, or not even sometimes I'll lose weight. I just see my body kind of trim up and just get more dense, even with all the Ironman trading, just from eating enough. I went from uh, recently in the last month and a half uh, with my training or two months, I went to 1.5 to almost two grams of protein per body weight. Mm. And I'm doing about uh, two grams of carbohydrates per body weight. And it, it's just crazy. People are like, wait, wh wh how? How are you? How did you trim up? And I'm like, well, my body's not starving itself. It's not storing anything it doesn't need to. I'm literally giving it everything it needs so it doesn't have to store any excess BS. It can just get rid of it because it knows it's being fueled properly. Yep. yep. And I was like, and I feel better. I'm ready to go every day. And it, it's pretty simple. Like, uh, one of my new things, uh, you know, during my training, not to take away from yours, but, uh, I put in when I'm on these bikes and I'm on these runs, I do 80 carbs an hour. Yeah. I do that. Plus I mix in my builder. So I have branch chains in my bottle. I have the carbs in my bottle. Plus I have all the electrolytes in my bottle. And people are like, well, you do that during your training as well. And I was like, if you're doing the volume, yeah, we're, we're at yeah. the point now where we're just starting. I use Boa and I start to put, I'll just put sugar um, inside of my builder when I'm doing like the bigger volume things and just yeah. go. It's, it makes yeah, a I big, big difference. Um, it, dude, it's crazy. People just don't really grasp the concept. And, uh, you know, I was having a conversation with somebody yesterday because we know we're talking about dialing their diet. And I said, stop having an irrational fear of food. Mm. Yeah. I mean, unless you're just one of these people that's bedridden, if you're moving hard as hard as fuck in the gym, even if it's just for an hour a day and you're eating like full hearty meals, God, your body will improve for sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. Man, I yeah. got to be honest, Corey Edwards, I'm yeah. glad that you wrote this, but I'm also disappointed that you wrote this. There are so many people that do not understand. Like, I mean, builder technically is it, but it's BLDR. Some people are like Boulder. Some people spell it like that Builder. Um, I don't well, understand why. When, when, unless you are re-typing it over in, in your phone, if you're doing like a voice text, Builder turns into Builder like Bob the Builder. Yeah. So yeah. maybe he let, – let's give him the benefit of the doubt. Maybe no, I am. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not upset with him. It's just I, I was surprised when I was traveling around Europe. People were like, Boulder. I love Boulder. I was like, are you trying to fucking fight? <laughs> it's builder say my name wrong like, you piece of shit brit i was like we already beat you once don't make it happen a second time <laughs> um the second product launches april 3rd in the uk the third and fourth product actually launch in um in in the uk in may and june 
I don't think our second product's going to come here until the States, until like June-ish. The United States, I'll be honest, like there's a reason why I picked the opportunity to work with an Irishman. Irishmen like to work. They don't like talking about it. They just do shit. So my Irish partner, he gets shit done. The distributor makes shit happen. And I'm, I'm pumped. Here in the United States, I call people all the time, delayed timelines, all sorts of stuff. I'm actually really excited about the new company that we're working with. I'm expecting to see really great things out of them. They seem to be on a different level. Um, I can't say the same thing about a certain company. Once I get big enough, I'm going to start trash talking them. But right now, I still, <laughs> I'm still small. I'm still small. Um, but yeah, we, we, it's, it's going to be extended. We'll probably have five products globally by the fall. And one of them, which I'm super excited about, and I'm busting my fucking ass to get done, it's going to change all of our mornings from this point on. That's just a hint. Um, Wait, are we, we're not talking about X2, no. are we? No, 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 no. X2 will give you an Was it something though. that we were talking about a couple of weeks ago before you went out of town? No, no, no. I'll tell you guys all about it. Uh, we're okay. talking right. about meth sponsors. <laughs> <laughs> Cocaine. Oh, lies. It's one degree away. <laughs> We'll it's get the CIA to chime in on our tat now because I'm sure we could just get them CIA supplies. The <laughs> Dude, Caleb Yates has been avoiding training camps for such a long time. And so is Brent. Brent Hastert and Caleb Yates came out for some of the original training camps. And those dudes' performances have been incrementally going down. And our training camps and the progress is incrementally going up. I'm not going to say that it's coincidental. I'm going to say it's 100% factual. <laughs> <laughs> You bitches both live in middle America and you're really? avoiding the hard work happening here in the sunny state of California. Yeah, if you man, guys, when, yeah. When the compass um, points north. Yeah, come on, guys. Let's go. Let's go. For um, them, it needs to point west and get their ass out there. I have two minutes left and then I have to get on the next call. What, do you, what, do you, what are the last ones? Rapid fire. Oh, man. I don't know. I, I was going to ask you what what's the uh, what are you most excited about on the new uh, Boulder product? <laughs> Thanks. Um, <laughs> bladder. Yeah, the, it's, it's your bladder, right? Well, listen, the new Builder product is creatine and citrulline. I have yeah. been using these two products to get ready for events for years. We're not building products for bodybuilders, even though bodybuilders can use them. We're not building products for endurance athletes, even though endurance athletes yeah. can use them. This is that middle ground hybrid athlete. We're looking to have performance both in strength and endurance. And that's yeah. why we – all these pro products have been formulated because of my training and my studying and then my concoctions that I've created. And this one's fucking awesome, dude. Like literally uh, – they're you know, very well-tested – Creatine is the most tested, the most supplement verified thing out there, dude. Yeah, and people for I don't even know how many years, like, why are y'all still disputing this? Yeah, for oh, decades, um, and it we just shows nothing but positive return. Yeah, I bet you Corey Edwards is from America. Where are you from, Corey? Write that in the notes. Come on, Corey, answer the question, and we're gonna bump you off the there. channel from the lab. Yeah. We get it from Russia, deep <laughs> down in mines. We're also um, we're going to be getting our meth from. <laughs> yep. All right, guys. Uh, I'm out, and I basically uh, – I'm pumped to be back, guys. We're going to start doing the Monday and Thursday shows again. Um, he is from the USA. That's exactly it. Also, another reason why I'm making more products in the UK, not that I don't want to answer your question, Corey, but most of the people here in the United States spend more time – trying to dig with uh, dig into the integrity of our products um, rather than digging into the value of our products. And it's really interesting. I have all these people, not specifically you, Corey, they're like, Hey man, you have um, uh, sucralose in your, in your, in your product. And I was like, yes, we do taste delicious. And they're like, well, I don't do unnatural things. <laughs> and I'm like, Hey, fuckhead. Every single thing that you touch is unnatural. The water you're getting from your sink has been tainted. The plastic containers that you're getting your supplements in yeah. have tainted everything. Everything that's gone through every grocery store that you've ever touched, I was like, see the bigger picture. Yeah. I, Meanwhile, I, they're snacking on chips and crackers and yeah. all the processed foods. And I'm like, do you only shop the perimeter of your grocery store? Because if yeah. not, maybe we should be quiet. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah it's, it's funny though because in the when I go over to the UK to make themselves feel virtuous or above, and when they're trying to talk about this kind of stuff, like, and not only that, but it's like, but it's not unnatural. Well, do you take any type of protein supplement? Well, yeah. that's made by us, whether it's extremely clean or not. 
Yeah. But you don't walk out to your whey protein powder plant and grind down the leaf. And it's like, this is where we get this from. It's made like this in this leaf form and we grind it down. And yeah, yeah it's just, it's a conversation. Um, it's a conversation that's, yeah. it's, it's odd, but I, I don't even deal with it anymore, but I could cut a guest. I don't know if he was calling us uh, douches. Will you let me try builder at WTM Vegas? Oh, you, thanks, Corey. Builder no. is fantastic. Corey said, Corey said, <laughs> said you met him at World Sh- World Tough Smutter, and then yeah. he, I think he called us douches. Thank you. Thanks, brother. Um, hey guys, so you can Sorry, expect Corey, to see more we were of us. actually trying to shit on you. No, we weren't. We weren't. I just wanted to ha- open up a dialogue. <laughs> um, so but yeah, maybe hey, I'm a douche here and there. Guys, you can expect to see us. Um, you know, this is this is our team right here. We're always trying to give back to the community. Always reach out to Parker if you want to talk about training. Always reach out to Ryan if you want to understand more about what we're doing with the business. He really is kind of the center of everything. I will honestly be kind of disappearing for the next eight weeks. Um, Not that I don't care about you. It's just because I have to hyper-focus, but I will always show up during these shows and I'll try to show up better uh, on social media if you guys have questions. But most of the information that we're putting out there, if you have questions, deliver it to the team and we'll answer it here on the show because we'll dedicate two hours a week to really making sure that we have a great time connecting with you guys. Um, Boys, I love you both. I got to bounce. Love you, big boy. Dude, glad to have you back, buddy. Yeah, yeah. Congrats again.